morning we'll turn with us over in the book of Ephesians in the third chapter Ephesians in the third chapter we feel uh, that God would have us to hear today amen I appreciate your presence in the Lord <clears throat> Ephesians 3 and 20 very familiar scripture he says now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above not just above and not just abundantly above, but exceeding abundantly above. I like the way God expresses himself, don't you? <clears throat> exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. God's bigger than we can even ask. He's even bigger than we can even think. That's why Peter, when he was trying to express God and his goodness and he was trying to find words and he couldn't and he said he's joy unspeakable and full of glory I can't find words big enough to express God he says exceeding abundantly above all a double all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us Amen. He put it back in our lap, didn't he? Let us pray. Father, we thank you today, most of all, for who you are. Thank you, Father, that you're home with those, Lord, that cannot make it here today. And, Father, you're strengthening their, their household, God. The angels encamped around ministering, Lord. The Hebrews 1 and 14 said their ministering spirits come to minister to the saints. And, Father, we just thank you today they're being ministered to as you're ministering unto us, Lord, this word today. And, Father, help us to find this word, God, in our good ground in our heart that would build our faith. Father, we realize your bigness and your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now to him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. According to the power that worketh within us, exceeding means above and beyond and more than. Amen. Ask means to ask or desire. Whatever you desire. That's why he said in Psalm 37, 4, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of your heart. A lot of people say, well, God won't give you what you want. My goodness, he'll give me the desires of my heart, but I've got to delight myself in him. It's all according to the power that worketh in me and in you. He said, ask or think. Think means to perceive or comprehend whatever you can comprehend of this word. Amen. According to the power that worketh in us, or the active or alive part. Amen. In other words, no dead word in us has to be with faith. Amen. Amen. That's so why I said in Hebrews 11, 6, he says, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is. He is what? He is whatever you That's why I said to Moses, tell him I am. I am whatever you need. That he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. A lot of people seek him, but very few diligently seek him. See, you got to read every word of God. Amen? Hallelujah. That's how we live, by the word of Almighty God. See, Abraham was known as the father of faith. See, his name was Abram, which means father. And later his name got changed to Abraham because God saw something in him and named him father of many nations. And his wife was, was barren, couldn't have children. And he, he was old man. And yet God named him father of many nations. Amen. That's why he said in Romans 4 and 17, he says, as is written, I have made thee, I have made thee. Not going to, I have made thee, Father of many nations. He ain't got a child. He ain't got no child. But yet God has already named him Father of many nations. I've made you this. God has made us and not we ourselves. Amen. He says, before whom he believed. Even God. Abraham just simply believed God who quickened the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Through, See, Abraham was not looking through eyes of flesh but eyes of faith. He called things that was not as though they were. Amen. What is it that you need? Then call it already done. 
Amen. Did he not say there in 2 Peter, in the first chapter, he said, God has given us all things, hath already given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Whatever you need, it's already been given. Just go ahead and see it and receive it. Amen. That's how wonderful God is to us. I hope you take notes a lot of, see, I've got a lot of scriptures, but a lot of times the Lord just feeds other scriptures in there and it all comes together, builds our faith. He said in Romans 4, 18, reading on it, it says, who against hope, believed in hope, who against the world and the flesh, telling him and lying to him and trying to deceive him, he believed in hope that he might become the father according to that which was spoken so shall thy seed be and being not weak in faith he considered not his own body amen he didn't look at the outside situations now dead when he was about a hundred years old neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb he didn't look on his inabilities but he looked on God's ability being not weak in faith, he didn't consider his own body, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's room. He staggered not, verse 20, at the promises of God. He didn't, he didn't kind of believe it one day. He didn't stagger. I mean, he was firm in believing God. Through, he didn't stagger through the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded. Are you this morning fully persuaded? Come on. Are you fully persuaded in the things of God? Are you fully, fully persuaded that you're saved, that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life? Are you fully persuaded that God will take care of all of our need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus this morning? Being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able, I'm telling you, he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. James 1 and 6, he says, but let the man ask in faith. Faith is boldness. That's why he said, Hebrews 4, 16, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. Amen? Huh? You know, when Hezekiah rolled off the bed and he turned his face to the wall, what did he say to God? I have walked before you with a perfect heart. I've done everything you told me to do. I'm here to collect. Amen? Let us come boldly to Now, if we hadn't been doing nothing all week long, we might come shyly to the throne of grace with a credit card out and say, Lord, I ain't done that this week. I ain't been living right. But here, can I get a little something on credit? But when I've worked hard at work on my job and I've worked hard all week long, my friend, uh, I walk up to that pay window boldly. I have earned my money. I've earned my right to be here. Hallelujah. Are you with me? He said, let him ask in faith nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea that it just creates foam. He's foaming at the mouth. Driven with the winds and tossed back and forth. For let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. A two-spirited man, a, a man that one day he believes God, the next day he don't. He questions God, he believes God. You can't serve God like that. I don't care what comes or go, God is still on the throne, Amen. I don't care how I feel or don't feel, God is still God and he's on the throne. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, help us, Lord. Let me tell you that, that little woman in the Bible in the Luke 8 chapter, she had a vision, did she not? She was about like Abraham. She was fully persuaded. She had sat there and persuaded herself, if I can just get there and touch the hem of his garment, something gonna happen. You know, it's according to the power that worketh in us. She had some power working in her. And when she's getting dressed, all the time she's getting dressed, she may be looking in the mirror, and that mirror is looking back at her and, and a picture of her, but she saw something different. She saw her reaching and touching the hem of his garment. She said, if I could just but touch the hem of his garment. The Bible said that she had been 12 years blood running out of her body. No doubt faith running out and strength running out. The Bible said that she had spent all that she had and was none the better. But yet, 
She had enough faith to believe if I can just get there and touch the hem of his garment, something's going to happen. I'm going to get my miracle. And you know what happened? All hell could not stop that woman from getting her miracle. Hallelujah. It was many people touching him, but one touched him with faith and with power working in her and she receives her, her healing. Remember, Jesus said, who touched me? And Peter said, Lord, a lot of people has touched you. He said, uh, somebody touched me with faith. Uh, man, faith is what moves God. A lot of people try to move him with pity. Lord, oh, you know I'm feeling bad. And Lord, you know I'm in need. And poor me. I don't move God one bit. It does not move God is looking for faith. I didn't quote it. Hebrews uh, uh, 11.6, but without faith. He didn't say without pity. He said, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. Are you with me? Ephesians 3.20 again. Now to him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. Boy, that's a good scripture, isn't it? But then he, according to the power, God will not override my will. God does not override anyone's will. It's according, it's according to what we allow in our life. It's according to the power that worketh within us. You see, flesh cannot see miracles. Amen? That's why Abraham had to call things that was not as though they were. He saw beyond the situation and he saw the miracle. And he began to claim the miracle. Amen? That's what he did. In fact, he says in 1 Corinthians in the second chapter in verse 9, it's quoted from Isaiah the 64th chapter, those taking notes. Uh, and it says, as it, but as it is written, I hath not seen nor heard, neither entered to the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. In other words, flesh cannot attain it. Flesh cannot see it. See, Isaiah is in the Old Testament. And Old Testament represents flesh. And it's quoted there that eyes not seen since the beginning of time. Eyes not seen, ears not heard, neither entered to the heart of man the things that God has prepared. And people in the church will stand around and quote that way. You know what the Bible says. It says, eyes not seen, neither ear heard, neither entered the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them to love him. And they stop. The Bible didn't stop there. There's a verse 10 is that verse 10 says, but, but. In other words, you flip over to the New Testament. Uh, amen. The blood of Christ uh, makes access uh, that I could go boldly to the throne of grace. Uh, but God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. Amen. Amen. That's what it says. Uh, For the spirit searcheth all things, uh, yea, the deep things of God. Uh, a problem with the church world, they're not spiritual. They're, they're fleshly uh, and they can't attain to the things of God. Uh, and God wants you to understand that he can do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh within us. Are you with me? God's trying his best to tell us and show us. This is a spiritual word. It's a spiritual revelation of his word. Amen? Amen? God has revealed them unto us how by his spirit for the spirit searcheth all things yea the deep things of God see so many people just read the Bible as surface man this Bible is wide and deep and high amen that's why you read the scripture one time you get one message brother Josh you read the same scripture get another man a deeper meaning <sighs> and the deeper you go the better the gold are you with me God's good. He said in 1 Peter 1 and 10, he says, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently. All the Old Testament says, oh, oh, if I could just live up there, up there. Isaiah said, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He bruised for our iniquities, chastised by our peace upon him. By whose stripes you are healed. He starts that chapter out. 53 said, who hath believed our report to whom the arm, arm of the Lord revealed? He said, if we could just live there, amen, in them times, them times, oh, y'all gonna have it made up there, church. Y'all gonna have it made up there. He says, 
of which salvation the prophets inquire and search diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you us. Searching water, what manner of time the spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified before the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should what? Follow. Unto whom it was revealed not unto themselves, but unto us. They did minister the things which are said now reported today unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you but with the Holy Ghost set down from heaven which things the angels desire to look unto. And he said, verse 13, wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. In other words, put your thinking cap on to realize who we are. We forget who we are. How many times did it say, Paul, Peter says, I, I put you in way of stirring up your remembrance. Paul said the same thing. Stir up your remembrance. Remember who you are. Amen. Man, we can't forget who we are and whose we are. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Wait just a minute. Wait just a minute. What Jesus saying? Mark eleven twenty two, he said, "Have faith in God." You know what, what reason he said that? They, they was going into the temple that day, and Jesus ran ahead of the disciples, get up to a fig bush and to get him some figs. On he got there, and nothing was on it. He don't like unfruitfulness. Why did he hurry up ahead of him? He didn't want them hogs to get it. He wanted to get him some, but there was nothing on it, so he cursed the bush. He cursed it. They went in was in there for several hours. They come back out, and the bush had withered. And Peter said, hey, look here, look, look. This thing's withered. In so many words here, Jesus said, God don't like unfruitfulness. That's the works of darkness. Unfruitful is the works of darkness. And Jesus said in Luke eleven twenty two 22, or, or uh, Mark eleven twenty two, he said, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, and that word say is epo, means already done. If you'll get you a vision, like that woman with the issue of blood had her a vision, man, when I touch the hem, it's gone. Who shall ever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that what those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. And then he said, verse 24, therefore I say unto you, let me just condense it down. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them. He didn't say how you feel it. A lot of times we pray, we get up feeling the same way. He didn't say nothing about feeling. He said, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Care less how you feel. Amen. Glory to God. Man, Lord, you're wonderful. Y'all ain't feeling it back there. Y'all need to come up here. I'm feeling this thing. Feeling good too. Amen. Glory to God. God is wonderful to us. How I long have I been preaching? Three minutes? <laughs> now, I'm going to have to jump on down here somewhere. Let's, let's see. Uh, sister, let's go on down to no, I want to, I want to catch uh, the next scripture, I think. Uh, 2 Corinthians 9 and 8. And who, because you said, now to him that is able. But here he says, and God is able. To make all grace abound toward you. Amen. Ah, in other words, he tilts things our way. That's why you, somebody say, how you doing? I said, I'm blessed. Because God is tilting it my way. Amen. And you know what prayer does? It creates a funnel. And it all comes to a funnel right to me. Thank you, Lord. Psalm 78, he said, How often did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him into the desert? Uh, yea, they turned up back and tempted God. And what did he say? Limited. Limited the Holy One of Israel. Tied God's hands. That's why he said, According to the power that worketh in you, don't tie God's hands. Just simply believe him. Amen? You know, in 2 Kings, in the fourth chapter, there's a story in the Bible there. This woman was crying out to the prophet and says, my husband is dead and the creditors have come to take my two sons away. Help us. You know what he say? 
He said, what you got? <laughs> oh, God wants us to have some skin in the game. Amen. You see, that's the problem with politicians. Politicians spend money that's not theirs on stuff they're not going to use. So number one, they don't care how much it costs. They don't care what kind of quality it is. Now, if you, if you was going to buy something that with my money that you was going to use, you could care less how much it costs. But you'd want it to be good because you're going to use it, right? Now, if you was going to have to pay for it and use it, you'd be concerned about the price. You should have to pay for it and you'd want top quality, right? But if you don't have to pay for it and you're not going to use it, you could care less how much it costs. And you could care less if it's worth anything. Because of the use. That's politician thinking. That's why we're in trouble. Are you with me? It says, Now to him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. Now, here's the thing. <clears throat> we limit God. This woman was asked, what have you got? She said, I ain't got nothing save a little pot of oil. He said, go out and bar vessels. And then he said something unique, not a few. In other words, bar it as many as you want. Because God can do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. According to our limitation that we put on him. The Bible said they went out and they borrowed a lot of vessels. They brought them in. They closed. He said, now shut the door and pour the oil. It was, it was cost a lot of money for that oil. So they began to pour the vessels. And she said, this is full. Bring me another vessel. And vessel after vessel. And the pot just kept pouring, kept pouring. And she said, she said bring me another vessel. Quick, quick. And we ain't got no more empty ones. And the Bible said that the oil stayed. Let me tell you, if they had lined up and kept bringing vessels, that oil would still be flowing today. Because God can do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. Come on. But they limited God. The same way that when Elisha, Elijah looked around at Elisha and said, man, what do you want from me? He said, I want a double portion of the spirit that's on you. Do you know that he, that was a great, Great story in all of it. Elijah had 16 miracles and Elisha, even after he died, did a miracle that made 32 miracles in his life. He got a double portion. But you know, he could have said, I want quadruple. Come on now. It's kind of like us, you know. And we're in need for, for $34.76. And we get on our knees and we'll say, God, I need $34.76. And then we get upset because we only get $34.76. Why not ask him for 35? Why not just round it to 35? Lord, I need $35. I got one better than that. Why not just ask him for $100? Pay you $34.76 bill and take the pastor out for a steak. What y'all think? <laughs> <laughs> oh, help us, Lord. Oh, aren't we funny? Aren't we funny? <laughs> I remember about years ago when we first got saved, and I was trying to put a little money in the savings account, you know. I mean, it's wonderful how big, fat savings accounts. feels good, not being debt and all that. But I, I was trying to save money. Get me a little savings account going, you know. Every week I put a little something in there and I look at it, that thing ain't going nowhere hardly. And it just seemed like a year or two went by and it wasn't nothing there. I said, man, Lord, what? The Lord said, what you need that for? I take care of you. I got a little money, you know, put back now, but listen, he told me, don't let that be your source of safety. Money can just fade away. In fact, it's on its journey now. Do y'all know that? Coin shortage. 
Y'all heard that? It's going to be a bill shortage next. Why? Because everything's going digital. Digital. Oh, digital. Yeah. And, and you know, these politicians, you know how they work? They'll look at Michael Brown's bank account and say, man, he got, he got $20,000 in the bank. And, and my brother Buddy's only got 2000 in the bank. And we need to take about 10000 from here and hit a button. Doop, doop. And now and then they're about equal. Oh, they won't do that. They won't. You know, they're trying right now to get a bill passed that'll tax every mile you drive. Every mile you drive. Oh, don't get me started with these crazy politicians. Just keep looking up. The rapture about to take place. God's going to have to get us out of here. Are you with me? Are you with me? Don't limit God. Remember in, in 2 Kings the 13th chapter when Elisha was an old man, he's about to die and he's, he's on the bed and, and, and the king came to him and, and he's worried about the king of Syria oh, battling him but he's going to oh, go fall to the feet and he came to Elisha and Elisha said, take your bow and arrow, open the window and they, he put his hands upon his hands he said to pull, he said, now shoot and he said, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance and deliverance from Syria, you'll defeat them and consume them utterly and he said, now take the arrows and beat them on the ground and they, I wish I had something give me this right here and he took the arrows and he went. And the man of God got upset with him. He said, at least you could have done five or six times. Now you're going to defeat him three times. Huh? That's how we receive from God. Sometimes we come to church and the preacher will preach a good message from God. God trying to build our faith and we go, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, but if we would really believe it, if we really believe it, oh, praise God, hallelujah. Woo, I'm delivered from Syria. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's true. 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 Good shot in it. Man, I should have played basketball. <laughs> If I tried, I would have hit it. I would have just threw it. Just, <laughs> the Lord had to help me on that one. <laughs> God's good, isn't he? Yeah. Let me get caught up here. Help us, Lord. Over in, over in First Kings. Oh, let, 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 me, let me just quote this scripture here again. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all, that we ask or think according to the power that worketh within us. What is that power? What is that power, Brother Whitfield? I like what Paul said in Romans 1.16, for I am not ashamed. You know what ashamed means? Reluctant to do something that may result in failure. Your flesh will tell you, no, that won't work. That won't work. That won't work. Tell the bumblebee, you can't fly. You can't fly. Man tells him it's impossible for you to fly. But God said, I want you to fly. And that bumblebee just flies. Said his wings ain't big enough. How many has ever seen a bumblebee flying? He's doing a miracle there. Amen? Say, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God. That word right there is the power of God. And the more the word you get down in you, the more power of God you got in you. Come on. Huh? What did Jesus do? Huh? He used that power when Satan came to him and he says, make these stones bread. He said, it is written. I give you the power of God's word. Are you with me? Over in 2 Kings in the seventh chapter, you're familiar story, y'all know about it. Amen. It says, 2 Kings 7 and 1, it says, then they, they call, the king had called for, for Elisha as a famine in the land. No bread, no nothing, no food. They're starving to death, selling duck, uh, donkey's head for 63 bucks in the day's time. And Doug's dumb for 50 cent. Who'd want to eat that mess anyhow? Whew, horrible. He said, then Elisha said, hear ye the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. That's what I come this morning to tell you. Hear the word of the Lord. Uh, let me tell you, the world is saying defeat and all kind of problems in the world. But God has sent me here to tell you today to hear the word of the Lord. Uh, now to him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh within us. Hear the word of the Lord. 
Thus saith the Lord tomorrow, about this time shall a measure of flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley, a shekel in the gate of Samaria. And then an old unbeliever stands up and said, the Lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, behold, that's an asterism in his face. Behold, the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be. And the man of God looked back at him and he said, behold, Thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shall not eat thereof. Amen. Let me tell you what the Bible say. Many things that Jesus could have done in their city, but he could not because of their unbelief, but heal a few sick folk. Amen. Don't tie God's hands with unbelief. Don't listen to unbelief talking. You know the story. I don't have to go into it. The four lepers that was there. Why sit here till we die? You know, and say, well, if we go into the city, we're going to die. If we go out there to the, to the Syrian camp, we're going to die. What do we do? Say, well, let's just go. And the Bible said, they went in the twilight. Everybody say twilight. They went in the twilight, twilight, twilight. You know, there's two twilights in a the day. There's, a, there's dark getting lighter, and it's dark getting darker. And we live in the twilight of the morning. It might be dark, but it's getting lighter. Amen. <laughs> the Bible said they went around and, and all the Syrians could hear was chariots. God put his microphone down on the little sticks knocking. They thought it was chariots of horses and, and warriors coming. They fled, right? They come into the camp and all the food. The Bible said they fled in the twilight. It was dark, getting darker. Amen. And they fled. They came in and long story short, uh, they finally bring the food back uh, or went tell the king uh, and, uh, and the king brought the food to the gate of Samaria. Amen. Just like what the man of God said. Come on. I don't know how God does all the things he does. Uh, he just told me to get up here and preach it. Uh, and he said, I'll confirm my word. Amen. Uh, that's what he told the disciples there uh, in the gospel there in the last chapter of, of Mark. Uh, and it says, and the Lord went with them confirming his word. Uh, he told them to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Amen. Just preach my word. Uh, I'm big enough to back my word up to do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask or think. Hallelujah. They get the food back to the gate of Samaria. In the 18th chapter of 2 Kings 7, it says, and it came to pass as the man of God had spoken, as the man of God had spoken to the king's sea and two measures of barley for a shekel and, uh, and, and a measure of fine flour for a shekel shall be in the morning about this time in the gate of Samaria. And the, and the Lord answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord should open up windows of heaven, might this should such a thing be? And he said, Behold, I shall see it without eyes, but it shall not eat. And so it fell out unto him for the people trod him in the gate uh, until he died. The man saw it, but he didn't eat of it. Uh, my friend, uh, there's a lot of people that will see the promised land, but they will not be allowed to eat of it. Why? Because of unbelief. Uh, amen. They allowed uh, flesh uh, to dictate to them uh, and get them away from God and to doubt God. Those come to instruments this morning. He's in Second Chronicles, the 20th chapter, 20th verse. Uh, Jehoshaphat uh, said this, he says, believe in the Lord your God, last part of it, so shall you be established, set up, erected, believe his prophets, so shall you prosper, have good success, great success, amen? You see, this message today is not David Whitfield's message. This message was already here when I, before I was born, brother buddy. But he says, bring this message in here today to encourage my people that I am able to do exceeding abundantly above all that they could even ask or think. Uh, according to how much of me they have in them. Amen? Glory to God. Glory to God. In closing Romans in the 10th chapter verse 13 he says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a say it, preacher? And how shall they preach except 
they be sent. I've been sent here today to give you this word from God. I feel the Holy Ghost in it. I said, I have been sent here today to give you this word from God. Mm. Oh, glory to God. Verse 17 says, so that Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, the word of God, the one, it's only one. So many out there that's not the word of God, killing people's faith. The word of God. I'm here today to tell you, if you'll believe this word that I have been inspired by God to bring to you and stand on it, you this day will begin to see your miracles come to pass. In fact, you're to say they're going home with me today. This word is going home with me today. This word is going home with me today that my God, that my God can is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I ask or think according to the power that works in me. The faith, the ability, the dunamis in me.